Hey man, King Sue, man, I just did a live as interview ever, man, with real life street stars, man. Make sure y'all tap in, go subscribe, man, and y'all stay tuned, man. More coming soon, man. Tap in, real life street stars, man. This real life, you did. Real life street stars, man. Hold up, we got us another one. God damn it, we got the man in the building, man. Needs no introduction, man. We got Mr. King Shu in the building. What's good with you, baby? What's going down, real life street stars, man? It's a blessing to be able to come down and, you know, sit on this blue couch I've been seeing. Oh, he's at the blue the couch. Tube. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? King Shu, everything blue, man. The world know what it is. Man, the world does know what it is, man. Uh, for those that are deaf, dumb, stupid, man, been living on the rock, uh, we always love to get the come up story, how someone came into, you know, even getting to this couch. Um, man, your story is very interesting, man. Um, I mean, it's a lot of hardship, a lot of, you know, shit from the, from the, from the bottom to the tizzy, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. man, let's go and go through that, man. Uh, where are you from? And uh, those that may know you, of course, King Shoe, but also what other monikers, AKAs you go by, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I'm for first and foremost, man, I'm from Port Arthur, man, that little town down south, man, southeast Texas, man, Golden Triangle to be exact, 49, mm. Port Arthur, Texas, man, Pimp C, Bum B, you know, Stack 5. Okay, okay. It's crazy because Port Arthur, man, uh, we just had, uh, you know, we, we just had DJ Beto came through here, uh, and uh, of course we went all the way up and through there about Port Arthur and Pimp C and uh, Bum B and just the whole UGK movement. Now, are you, you, you come from that era where UGK was strong in Port Arthur, therefore, you know, people, the, the stomping grounds are there. Now, the reason why you're even on this couch right now is because you, you, you got into the streets early on. Right, right. I'm talking about early, like how early did you get into, into the shit? Man, to be honest with you, man, I was out there, man, I mean, nine, ten years old. Now, that's hard to believe, bro, because... Yeah, nine, ten years old, man, I can't make it up. Because I'm thinking nine, ten is, uh, what grade is that? That's, uh, what grade is that? Uh, like, fourth, fourth grade. Fourth, fifth grade, yeah. Like, just tell me some of the escapades that you're doing at nine, ten years old just to have even just, just even gaining notoriety. I mean, first and foremost, you know, the era I come up under, like I say, the pimp and bun era, but more likely, it's, you know, it was a crew called the Mega Five Tries, man, in Port Arthur. And most of them was my family or neighbors from the neighborhood, you know, and uh, growing up watching them cats, them cats was already in the streets, you know, selling drugs, thugging, you know, doing whatever you do, you know. Oh, yeah. And see, I adapted to that. You know, and by me being, I guess, a few of them smelled me like knew where I was headed. Like, you know, some people can tell. You know what I'm talking about? Some people can tell, man, that boy, they're going to be such and such, such and such, you know. And shit, they used to put it in my head, you know, to do certain things in the neighborhood. Like, I started out jumping on grown men and, you know, it just was all kind of crazy shit going on, man. No, definitely. You know, I took it off into the school highs and hoods against hoods. Fourth, fifth grade, Booger T. Washington, man, West Side, Port Arthur, man. You know. When it comes to a situation like that, is your is mom is mom's there, dad there, is brothers, sisters, like who, who's all in the family? Man, right I, I'm the baby of six, man, and oh, yeah, uh, that, that tells a lot. You that know, tells a, a lot. Single mother, you know, working two jobs, trying to make it wait for us, you know. So she wasn't really there, so. Mainly my siblings, man, they had to look out for me. They had to play the parent role until mama came home. But when mama came home, I was asleep. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, definitely. Now, you was originally going by Peace Shoe, huh? Yeah, that's, that's my nickname that my father gave me. Mm. How, how did it come to get the name King Shoe? I'm just, you know, did that start? Well, shit, I mean, to get straight to that, King Shoe came from, you know, me being incarcerated and finding me. See, it's an attribute. Okay, tell Knowledge be inspiring, noble, God fearing soldier. I'm open minded, open hearted. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. You see hell what I'm yeah. saying? So, you hell know, yeah. that's where that come from. When I went to prison after doing a 20 year bid, 
you we know, gonna, came home. I'm I'm a king. You feel me? Yeah, we gonna we gonna get right into that, man. Uh, but first and foremost, um, I remember you were saying something in a, in another interview. And again, shout out like Diamond Stone who interviewed you. Uh, um, you said uh, like 11 years old. You was you was already like. Yeah, shit. I was knee deep. 11 yeah. years old, I was knee deep. Like. And what does knee deep look like? I mean, you got niggas running with you. You running I mean, with niggas. Knee deep, man. I'm doing grown man shit. You know, mm -hmm. I had my own car. Mine's paid for. I stay with a pocket full of money. I'm drugging. I'm thugging. Are you driving at eleven? Yeah, I had my own car. God. On the ship. What kind of car was that? A '69 Cut Dog. Oh, nigga, yeah, you roll. <laughs> Four hard hard. At side. eleven years old, oh, yeah, yeah, you riding. So you know. On Shaw, Texas, that yeah. street UGK wrapped about, you know what I'm Shaw, saying? Shaw, Texas, yeah. Yeah, a baby out there, the only baby out there, the only youngster to do it in Port Arthur. What does the OGs say to you when, like, just to see you that young getting to it? Like, the, the niggas, like, give you more game or they I take mean, you out the streets? I mean, to be honest with you, like I say, a lot of them was my neighbors, cousins, you know, and to this day, them guys see me now and they smile, pat me on my back, but... You know, because it's a different ball game, different time now. But back then, they used to tell me, man, take your ass home. You know what I'm saying? You tripping, nigga. Take your ass. Because I was athletic, into the sports at the same time. But once I got exposed to getting that money at a young age, man, couldn't nothing take me away from that. And I'm just curious on the thoughts from a young a young kid getting that kind of money. Did you see a, a, like an end game or out? Or you just like, hey, it's day to day right now? Nah, I was lost, man. Mm. I was lost. You know what I'm saying? I, it wasn't no... As far as me having a, a goal in the game or none of that, you know, it was just, hey, I'm going to get up and get it. When I get it, I'm going to do what I can do with it, and I'm going to keep going. And that's what happened. That's what led to me, you know. So I want to touch on that, man. Uh, you had to do a sit down, you know, for 20 years. And we're going to go through the, through the right. gist of what that happened with that was. Um, but you was, um, you was 13. You had just turned 14. By just like I guess a month or so, two by months. By two months, right? Where you, you again, you damn near you, you, you still just kind of thirteen going into your fourteen year, right? And then you end up catching the, uh, you know, the charge that changed your life. And um, even when you explain it, I feel like it's so fucked up. But I'm gonna let you go through it. Um, can you tell us what happened? Uh, just in a nutshell, as far as what caught you to even get to this point. Um, before you go there, I just want to get into what made you grow up so fast. Cause eleven, I get like eleven. That's young, like that's real young, bro. Like, right. I want to know, like, in your mind, cause at eleven, I can't even comprehend to even to even get behind the wheel. Right. So it's like you got you got money, you got your own, you know what I'm saying? Then you got older brothers and sisters. You got sisters too, right? Two sisters. Yeah. Three so brothers. like, what? I'm trying to. I'm just trying to get in your mind and see what made you. How, how did you, you know what I'm saying? Man, really, to be honest with you, man, I was always one who wanted a father figure in my life, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't have, unfortunately, I didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? So the guys, the big homies in the streets was my father figures, you know? So by me, like I say, me witnessing the game, you know, just sitting back being a wise individual, I was always one who paid attention, you know, I listened, you know, and shit, I adapted it. When I seen it, and I'm like, damn, well, I might need to, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to find a thing. Like, I ran, it was kids in the neighborhood who had Jordans. You know, they wearing Jordans. I'm going to pay less wearing XJ900s that look like Jordans. You know what I'm saying? I know, know what saying? you're talking about. Yeah, I know what you mean. So it's like, I wasn't feeling that. But. That's what my mama bust the ass for, you know what I'm saying? So, shit, when I seen how my kinfolk then was getting to it, I'm like, shit, I'm finna figure out a way. And I figured out a way. So I'm just curious, because everyone talks about what they seen to motivate them to do it. Was there anything that you seen to motivate you to not, to get up out the game? Like, at a young age, did you see any shit that made you say, nah, this shit right here kind of wild? Nah, see, the game was different when I was coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like the cats I come up under, they got money. They got money, they didn't take money. You know what I'm saying? And they had the finer things. You know, they had the nice cars, the nice women, you know, and doing everything, you know, 
a man want to do back then anyway. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Was was music a heavy influence or movies a heavy influence on you at that time? Or was it just a yeah, Man, to be Jesus honest stuff. with you, I wasn't watching no movies. I, TV wasn't an option for me coming up. Talk to him. You know what I'm saying? And as far as the music goes, no, I, I, music ain't had no, had no kind of impact on my actions back then. So what exactly led up to the situation, man? Because again, I, you know, it's, 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 the story's crazy as hell, but I want you to kind of go explain to the fans as far as um, kind of what led you to have to sit down so long. And we gonna go all the way through there, but just what was the incident that led up to that? Man, like I say, you know, one night out in the hood, 503. You know, y'all heard Bum B scream that in one of the songs, you know. So I have to be in that mountain on that 503, you know. The mountains, that's my hood, 503, where I caught my murder case at. Mm. And, uh, you know, out there selling drugs, getting to the bag. And, you know, that day it was crazy because it was like a day before the last day of school, May the 20th, 1993. And, uh... I'm on probation at the time, you know what I'm saying? So from what, from what charge before? Assault. I had assault charge, so I was on probation. Broke this guy's nose. Mm. So With your fist? Or? Yeah. Oh god, yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, I. Uh, blue hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was on probation for that. So you know, of course, my mama at this time she was like, "Boy, what you doing? You know you're on probation. You stay your ass in this house." So, you know, she'll talk, but then she go to her room and do her. Shit, I slid up out the crib. You know what I'm saying? I had just called me a 50 pack. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, I'm finna go get rid of this here, you know, so I can start all over again. You feel me? So, I shot to the east side, 503 on the east side, you know. And I went out there, ran into four of my guys, four of my other peers that I run with, you know, on a daily basis. They get money, they young. They was like, the youngest of them was like 16, you know, 16. Then it was me and the rest of them was 17, 18. Sounds about right. You know what I'm saying? So we out there shooting hoop and slang and work, you know. It rolled like that. It, it, it's heavy like that. That neighborhood back then, it was... You get money. If you got it, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So long story short, man, uh, police officer pulled up. And, you know, majority of the PAPD, they knew me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I said, I remember you said the uh, the chief of police knew you at like yeah, 11 the, years the, old. He the knew current, the man that's currently chief of PAPD, Tim Doris, so right now, yeah, he used to run me off short text back then. You know what I'm saying? But now he see me, now he's smiling. Boy, you doing good. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, the laws pull up. So I'm like, damn, I'm out of there. You know, so I throw my dope in a McDonald's cup that's on the ground. You know what I'm saying? I go to grabbing the ball, shooting the ball. Like, you know, we playing ball and shit. So, of course, they pee shoot, come here. I'm like, dang. I'm thinking they done seen me throw the dope in the cup. You know what I'm saying? But. The law hit me with that, man, what you doing out here? You know you ain't supposed to be out here. Ain't you on probation? I'm like, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go. You know what I'm saying? He said, all right, if I come back out here and you out here, you know what it is. I said, I promise I ain't gonna be out here. You know, and I'm the only one he messed with, you know. Mm. They left. So they quit. You know, I wait till they get on about their business. Man, I go to the cup, my dog gone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so they put me in a whole nother mode. Now I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Who got my dope? Like, I'm looking around. You know, I ain't saying nothing at the time. I'm just trying to read everybody. And I couldn't read nobody, so I'm hot now. So now I'm in, I'm in think mode. I'm like, damn. So then uh, this chick named Sheila from the west side, it was her birthday. You know, she a short Texas dope fiend, you know. Okay. And uh, okay. it was her birthday, so she like, shoot, give me something, boy. It's my birthday, woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, she, I ain't got nothing to give you, man. She, come on, shoot, I know you got it. You don't never go without it. I, man, I ain't got nothing. Somebody just took my shit. I'm hot, you know. So in between time, meantime, a truck come through, and it's a white guy. You know what I'm saying? So that's that norm in our neighborhood, like, don't know white people come to our neighborhoods. 
not Lewis Manor, not 503, none of now. They don't come to the hoods like that, you know, so. He by himself? Yeah, he by himself in the truck. So when he pulled up, you know, she spied him, Sheila spied him. So, you know, them dolphins, they mindset be the, you know, oh, I'm finna get white boy, I'm finna get on, it's a lick or something, you know. So, boom, I'm like, get out the way, Sheila, you know what I'm saying? So, me and my partners run up to the truck, and we like, what's up, what you need? Woo, woo. And he like, I don't need nothing. What y'all need? So, we, what you got? He said, I got some grass, you know. How much you got? You know, he had three pounds. But he didn't say if he had it on him or, you know. So, we like, I right, bet. He get out his truck. He lead the truck running, you know. And uh, me and my partners, and I'm like, you know, you think he got it in the truck? You know, I'm like, that's the question. So the man like, man, uh, who going to come with me? I need somebody to ride with me. So me being a wild one, you know, I'm like, shit, I'll go. You know what I'm saying? So my partner yeah. like, uh, man, just get the truck. It might be in the truck. The truck running. Mind you, the truck running. And he's standing outside the truck. So here comes Sheila. What's up, Red? You know what I'm saying? She's talking to the Caucasian guy. What's up, Red? So he see her, and that took his focus off what we had going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, Sheila, go on, man. You know what I'm saying? Chill out. She, man, it's my birthday. I'm trying to get me something, you know. So she got him. He locked in on it, though. So my partner, like, shit, just get the truck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I jump in the truck. And, you know, I mashed the gas and dropped it in drive, and it went to spinning, you know. Yeah. So the driver door still open. So by the driver door being open, he managed, when the truck right before it pulled out, he managed to jump on the door. You know what I'm saying? And when he jumped on the door, he on the inside. So mind you, it's the door open, it's him, and it's the inside of the truck and me. Yeah. You know, so... We went to wrestling with the wheel. When the truck took off, he grabbing the wheel. So I'm trying to, you know, he 38, I'm 14. The truck lose control and hit a telephone pole. So when that truck hit that telephone pole, that impact from the door, the door would have closed. But by him being in between the truck and the door, it crushed him. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that happened. And that's what cost me 20 years of my life. Now, I'm curious, uh, because you said it was listed as murder. Right. Uh, first degree, second degree, did they say the degree? It was uh, it was first degree. Um, something like that would probably fall into manslaughter just because it was no intention of nah, you to... Nah, exactly. It would have it been manslaughter, but by me being young and it just being my mama, I'm the only one getting in trouble out of my sibling, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. No father, nobody to say, hey, man, look, get you a lawyer, get him a lawyer, this what this is, this. And, and then me, I didn't, at the time, man, I was like, shit, it is what it is. Non-caring attitude. You know, I always was one of them that if I do it, I'm going to take my lick. You know what I'm saying? So. Where, where was the dope? What the dope? Grass, the grass that he had. Man, to this day, I can't tell you because after, after the situation, you know, that's the part I ain't tell, but once the truck crashed, he fell, the telephone pole split, and he was right down side of the pole. And what I did, I went up a little more, then I jumped out the truck, I let it roll, and then it hit a tree. That's what stopped it. But I wasn't worried about the truck and the weed no more, because my partner then was standing over here by the dude talking about, man, he dead, shoot. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, damn. So I go over there and I look, and his eyes was open, you know, and he wasn't breathing or nothing. So I'm like, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Was there uh, like a manhunt for you or something like that, or did you turn yourself in with your people? Nah, or? it wasn't no manhunt because, I mean, the laws already knew who was all on the park. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? They just already had pulled up. And yeah, they already knew who was on the park. They came straight to my house. You know what I'm saying? Just to question me, though. Do you feel like there was some sort of, you know, injustice on, done to you just because of where you were from and you already had a bad rap and, you know, being from a small town like that, you feel like there wasn't a fair... I fight? mean, I mean, to be honest with you, that ain't no assumption. 
You know, that's the fact. You know, being from Jefferson County, anybody know anything about Jefferson County? You ain't got no wind, especially if you black. You ain't got no wind going through them courthouses. If you can't afford no mild piece, you dead. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and prior to that, another reason they, they banked me because I was on another murder case before that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was like, I, they knew I didn't do it, you know, but they just, you know how, they know I was affiliated with it. And I was too young, you know, and then I tried to take the case for my partner. You know oh, what I'm saying? I shit. tried to take it, but they kicked me out the jury. Dang. We know you didn't do it. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, no, that's but it. it's like they remember that same judge. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a matter of time. I, that's the first thing they told my mama. When my mama came to the police station, because they came to the house, and I heard them. My room right there by the door. And they say, it's peace. I heard the knocking. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm like, man, who that is? So I laid there, played possum. And my mother, she get up for work. And she was a manager at McDonald's. So she get up at 4.30 in the morning, every morning, get ready for work to go open up. So she, uh, she was already up. She say, who is it? And she opened the door. They say, is peace you here? So when they said that, I'm like, shit, that's one of my partners. You know what I'm saying? But she, she was like, yeah, come on in. I look up, it's flashlights in my face. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn. So I jump up. I'm like, what's happening? Oh, nothing. We just need to talk to you. You ain't got to panic. I said, I ain't panicking. I'm trying to see why you in my house. Oh, we just want to talk to you about something that happened on 503. We knew you was out there. I say, oh, okay, okay. You know, but by me being through them type of situations with questioning, you know, I knew how to handle the situation. So, you know, I ain't panic. I'm talk I talked to him. And of course I was in denial. I ain't fit to tell on myself, you know what I'm saying? And uh he was like, Well, do you mind coming to the police station and talk to the detective? So again, if they knew I did it, I knew how they would have handled me. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, they really didn't know. But when I walked in that police station, that's when they, you know, somebody pointed me out. You know what I'm saying? Did, did anybody go to jail with you? I mean, did anybody else get arrested? Nah. They, went, they was in that police station, but they ain't go to jail. Okay. Because, <laughs> like, back in the day, did they ask you to snitch on anybody that was out there with you or anything like that? They asked you? Somebody told yeah, somebody told them. Okay, so somebody that was out there with you. Yeah, somebody told them. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's crazy because I was just watching the the uh, what's that Netflix when they see us, yeah. uh, where four four young boys that age, uh, they all held it solid, but it's like the way the police do it, they get it to where they ask you questions to where like I don't want to call it telling, but it's like process of elimination like right right i know what yeah you're like oh yeah. shit like you're supposed to just get a lawyer but did you even know to like say i need a lawyer you just went in there i mean i know somebody pointed but with the court appointed situation were you trying to get a lawyer or were you like fuck it whatever nah, I, I, you know the lawyer you was acting like he was for me so oh yeah you know, you know i was doing nobody saying man the court appointed is trash man don't fuck with them you know i'm yeah Shit, I'm like, all right. He like, man, you know, they really, this ain't serious like this, so you gonna be shit. Oh, shit. Nah. So, so tell, you gotta break this down. How the hell did they give you 20 years at that age? They didn't give me 20 years. Okay. They gave me a life sentence for a juvenile. 40 years. 40 years. But at that time, that's the most you can give a juvenile before they pass the law in September of 1993. So, I 40 mean, years I'm trying to see, most. like, how did they paint you, like, when you be in that age, were you remorseful or anything about the situation? Or yeah, yeah, I, I was because it was honest, uh, honestly, accident. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, you know, for for out there thugging. I'm yeah. not saying I wasn't. You know, because I, you know, like I say, man, I set full responsibilities for a, on the street. I wasn't supposed to be out there doing what I was doing, first and foremost. But at the end of the day, hey, it happened. But when it comes to justice, 
Man, it wasn't no justice. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you give a 14 year old that didn't shoot nobody, didn't stab nobody, you know, didn't beat nobody to death? You can, you can, you can clearly see. I mean, anybody with a, a, a stable mind can easily see from. Yeah, it's an accident. It's an accident. You it's know, but nah, they weren't trying to hear none of that. Did your lawyer try to? I mean, this is a 30 year. Nope. He, he's a he's trying to sell drugs. I mean, they didn't. Did he do anything with that information? As far as like, hey, bro, this ain't nah. That, everything was pointing on me. Damn, that's why I was the menace. That's why. TYC. Um, they send you straight to TYC. Um, yeah, I went to TYC, getting state home in school. <sighs> um, did you know of the place before you went there? Like, have you have you been there? For I like had a, I had a couple of partners that was there. Uh, already Before there. I went there, but they they had them came home, you know they way older than me, but they had went down through there. All right, so it's it's very well known, and again an, another reason that even you know these conversations come up. But that's where uh, you meet a Charleston White, uh, right? You meet um, Anthony Dubair. Uh, you know we interviewed Prince Rashid, right? Uh, right. These are guys that came up in the. The, the, state school, yeah, the state, state school. Baby. Yeah. How was that for you as far as, you know, you know you got 40, but you're going through, of course, the TYC situation. Um, how was it for you adjusting to that, just initially? Man, to be honest with you, I went down there wild and like. Oh, they like fight, fight niggas? Yeah, or, yeah, uh, I, was, I was off the chain. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't digest you know what I'm saying? 40 years, I'm like, I couldn't see it. Like, you know, I'm like, I got 40 years. I ain't never going home. You know, that was my mindset back then. Mm. At the time, were you gang affiliated? Uh, yeah. Going in. And mind you, this 93, so a lot, even a lot of our fans probably don't know how it was back then at the time. But the Crips and Blood situation was like, I think, 91 through 94. It was like an all-time high. I mean, that's when like it really went down. Um, how bad was it when you got in there as far as just uh, just the gang affiliation, as far as getting in there, seeing niggas you know, it was seeing bad. niggas you don't know, niggas you might have had beef with? I ain't know nobody in there oh, when man. I went there. I ain't know a soul. But gang activities was at all-time high. Mm. How was it, uh, you know, and you can answer to this because, you know, when I spoke to Prince Rashid and I spoke to Charleston, they were saying that uh, young men who committed crimes of that nature, where, again, in Texas, young black kids killing white men was kind of unheard of at the time. It wasn't, it didn't happen too often. Nah. But it was going down to where there was a few individuals like yourself that where it happened. Yeah. To where, um, man, they, I don't want to say they ran experiments, but they, um, they studied y'all, or like, like, did they do? Was that were you part of that situation? Because Charleston had mentioned that. Yeah, I've been through all that, man. We we all got that blueprint. Yeah, like, um, yeah. Did you understand what was going on as far as them trying to understand the mentality of a young black kid in Texas that might have committed this? You know, that. that not this? not when I first got there. I didn't I didn't understand that until like ninety six. 95, 96, when me and Charleston like was together on the dorms and you know we was in groups together where you know you sit down in that group, they break your whole life down, make you role play, do all that. You know what I'm saying? So that's when dealing with psychiatrists, this psychiatrist is doing this to us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Does that help as far as for you to because what they want to see, they want to see the remorse, they want to see the uh, what, what you know, I they want to see a few different it, things. It, it helps. If you wanted to help, if you allowed to help, yeah, it helps. Yeah. Mm. Because it, I mean, I'm saying that because when I went through it, like, I didn't think that you can break me down. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I didn't think that I was a dude that can cry in front of people, can really feel, you know, but they did that. They did that, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. And this they is still, did that. this is still doing a uh, TYC. This is not even uh, before you actually go sit down as you become an adult. Nah, this state school. Yeah, this is still state school. Yeah. Um, overall, your time at state school before you even get to the real situation. Um, 
comparing it to prison. Right. For those that ain't never been, for those young kids out there that's watching that, you know, might fuck around. Um, would you say the time was easy for you? Doing well, that situation, doing CYC? School? Yeah. It was easy for me because of the caliber I was. You see what I'm saying? Like, before I entered any state schools, penitentiaries, juveniles, you know what I'm saying? I was in the streets, like, and really doing the shit that these niggas, you know, act like they wanted to do or, you know, they, they was acting. I really was doing this, you know what I'm saying? So I was equipped for the incarceration. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, I had guys used to tell me in the hood, like, boy, you penitentiary bound. And they telling me this, I'm 12, 13 years old, but I never knew what they were saying until I got incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? All right. How, how heavy were you into the gang life even prior to going to get incarcerated? Like, I know, you, of course, you get into get the money, but as far as the gang life, how heavy it, were you into that? It was like this, like, in the Golden Triangle, like, Port Arthur Beaumont, it's, it's, Beaumont was banging back then. Yeah. Port Arthur, you had gangs, but like a lot of my partners was Crips, but you had like five bloods in Port Arthur. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't no, it wasn't no shoot 'em up, bang, bang, and all that. So it wasn't serious like that. You know, one of my brothers, he was into it real tough, you know, with a guy from Galveston named Snake, you know, and uh, you know, I used to see it, then I had a few partners come down from Cali. You know, that's what they was on, but then when they got to PA, they put their chucks and dickers in the closet. You know what I'm saying? So, it really, I knew about it, was familiar with the culture, and was a part of that culture. So, when I got there, I already knew what to expect. You see what I'm saying? So, when I got there, shit, and I seen them niggas were really banging in there. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, wow, here it is. You know what I'm saying? So it really wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing major to me. You know, I fell right in, you know. Where do you think you would be if you never would went to jail? Man, honestly speaking, man, it, that's that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. But I can say this here, uh, a lot of my guys, they not here right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and the path that I was on, it's a big percentage that I probably would have been where they at. Um, snitching, right? Everybody's like snitching nowadays is almost acceptable now. Like I ain't know almost it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what is your what is your stance on that? Doing that you had to do twenty years straight straight through. Oh, uh, well, you know how I was raised. You know, uh, by that code, like, you snitch, you ain't it, you know? So it's like, it's crazy because I see it every day. I hear it every day, you know? And it's like, I'll never be able to accept that. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. I tell people all the time, like, I'm going to use 6 9 for example. I always use this scenario. Like, I don't knock him for what he did. Reason why, 6 9 is not a street cat. 6 9 didn't come up in the streets. So therefore, he didn't have that code to live by or the honor. You see what I'm saying? So it's a difference. 6 9 did what he felt was right. And to him, it is right. You know, you do something to me, I'll do it. I'm going to tell. You know, so... You can't, you can't knock nobody that ain't come from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if I ain't in the streets, I ain't living by no code. I'm a righteous individual, so I'm going to do the righteous thing. Right. You see what I'm saying? But when you out in them streets and you pretending to be that nigga, and then, you know, something go down, and then you don't want to take your lick, and you tell and do out, oh, no, I can't respect that because you out here acting and putting on. If you're going to be out there, stay 10 toes down and lay down. When it's time to lay down, lay down. So I got to ask uh, your thoughts when we have a guy like uh, Terrence Gangster William, Birdman's brother. Right. Birdman's brother, um, who uh, 
he basically told on some situations that he knew of from some homies that were no longer here. Right. But he basically assisted the cops to close some cases to cut his time short. Right. That's how the feds operate. Yeah. They, they, you give you know, them a body, you good. Open cases got to get closed. Yeah. You um, give them a body, you good. What are your thoughts as far as when you see, he said he's a civilian now. He's like, hey, and he actually sat on this couch. He's like, I know I broke the code and whatever happens, happens. I, I know what happened and I know right. what comes with it. But, hey, I'm a civilian now. It is what it is. But I'm a, you know, hey, I got to stand on whatever I did. What are your thoughts on that as far as, you know, like you said, everybody's doing it, but is the past given? Because he's like, I ain't trying to go back home all day, but I got a life to live and I got, you know, I right. got kids out here and I got to, you know, push it forward. When you see something like that, what are your thoughts? Because even T.I. Harry said the same thing happened to him where his cousin came to him in a dream. Man, I mean, I, like I say, I can't respect it. Mm. I can't respect the matters of the change in your life or whatever, man. You come from that. You see what I'm saying? You're a civilian now. You didn't change your life. You know what I'm saying? That's why you able to embrace the thought of saying whatever come with it. I know what come with it. You see what I'm saying? You know you tripped out. You know what I'm saying? So I can never respect a dude who come from the streets and then feel like they can roll over on somebody and, you know, dead or not. Dead or alive, man, is a code. A code is a code. A code is a code. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, for instance, man, you know, I got a relationship with the man I killed with his, his wife. You know what I'm saying? How did that come about? Man, it's great. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, how did it? Uh, how did that oh, come about? Did y'all write because, each other? Oh, this how this happened. It's crazy, bro. Like when I got locked up, like I say, all the laws know me. So when I got locked up, they painted a picture to the lady, to Miss Sherilyn. They painted a picture to her, and it was like they told her this was their exact words. She told me, she say, Damien, you know, they told me once you hit the system. I ain't no longer got to worry about you. You see what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Not because I got 40 years, but they told her somebody going to do, somebody going to end up killing me down there because the type of person I was. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So her daughter's birthday is on the 27th, March 27th. My birthday is March 23rd. So when her daughter, her daughter was five when I killed her father. And uh, she used to tell her mother, Mama, I want you to change my birthday. I don't want my birthday close to his. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I think I was getting ready to turn 28, 2006. And uh, Miss Sherilyn said, her daughter said, Mama, it's going to be Damien's birthday. And she said when she thought about it, she said, you sure right. She said, Damien for to be 28 years old. They told us he wasn't going to make it to C-17. 14 and a half years later. This for 2006, 14 and a half. I've been gone 14 and a half years. Yeah. So Miss Sherilyn said, you know, red flag popped up like something ain't adding up. So she went through the mediation through Austin and said, I want to meet this guy. I need to sit down with this guy. You know what I'm saying? So we went through the mediation program. And uh, the mediator came up there. I, I was shook at first. I'm like, man, what's going on? You know, he said, man, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You know, he said, the victim family want to meet you. The mother and the daughter, they want to meet you. So I'm like, okay. He said, now, if you don't want to do it, you ain't got to do it. It can't affect you none. You see what I'm saying? So I say, no. Nah. I want to do it, I'd be happy to do it, more than happy. I say, because I've been praying 14 and a half years for this day. You know what I'm saying? He say, wow, for real? I say, yeah, because I know she need this. And she also need the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because they were like, man, it was all kind of stories about me with this guy, man. And like, they made up all kind of say I killed him because he wanted to play. Like, like a, it was an intentional thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wanted to play basketball, and man, it was all kind of crazy shit. I'm like, what? Are you serious? She's like, yeah, Damien. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, wow. How'd that first meeting go uh, as far as just... Oh, man, it was crazy. Like, we started writing. We had to write for like 90 days and build up that, that momentum. He like, I'm going to let y'all write each other. 
you know, we got to write through him, though, so he can read the letters and see how it's going. And then he say, after 90 days, if I see everything cool, then y'all can meet in person. I'm going to let her come up here. We're going to set it up. Y'all going to be in visitation. Woo -woo. So long story short, we end up meeting like this. So I, had, I was on Clemens unit then. I had to told all my partners, damn, man, y'all pray for me. I'm finna go sit in front of these people, man, and, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everybody was looking forward to it, man. They walked. They, they toured the unit. We actually got to see them before they seen us. So they like, man, them people here, look. You know what I'm saying? So, she, I mean, I prepared to say a whole lot. You know that. Yeah. But it's like once I got in front of them, I couldn't say none of it. Everything I prepared to say, I ain't say not one word of it. That's how I knew God was working. Uh, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's I just, real. I spoke from the heart, like, and the woman felt it. Her daughter felt it, you know? That's real. And uh, she was just like, Damien, you know, I was going to make you do that whole 40-year sentence. Like, I came up for parole in 97 as soon as I got to prison. They denied me. See what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, they gave me a three year set out, two year set out, three, 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 two years. I'm like, damn, why they set me off like this? I ain't getting in no trouble. I ain't got no disciplinary record or none of that, you know? Yeah. Come to find out, she was protesting. She told me. Oh, wow. She yeah, like, they, she they, like yeah. the reason you ain't home is because I've been protesting. Every time you come up and they call me, I'd be like, no. Don't let him out. And she said, that's how I felt. I hated you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I was like, damn. You know, I felt it, though. I said, man, I can't be mad at you. You know, I took something from you. So she was like, Damon, but after this conversation, I really feel like you deserve to go home. I feel like you changed. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how that went. The first one, we cried all that, you know. And I was like, man. Again, man, it's just you were so young. When you were sitting there, do you did you ever think like feel sorry for like yourself? Like, damn, I'm I'm 14. Like, do I really like? Do I deserve all this time? How, you know what I'm saying? What, what was going through your head? Like, when you, yeah, like, man, I you know at first it like it didn't set in. You know, like, that 40-year sentence didn't set in until I got to prison. When I got to prison, I started feeling it like, damn. When I'm really seeing, like, boys seeing parole, how the system really work. You know, TYC, you, oh, you might be going home, and when you turn 21 or when you go back to court, they might let you go when you turn 17, you know. I'm playing sports. Like, I'm in TYC, we do everything the free world do. We playing free world high schools. I'm all in the Sports Illustrator. Oh, Scholarship at Blend Junior College. Oh, Them people was like, that judge say, nah, we don't care about none of that. You kill somebody and send them to prison. Now, you mentioned, of course, 2006. 2007, I think, is uh, you damn near fainted in front of the warden. <laughs> yeah. Now, what would cause... A man like you to, to damn near faint. Man, it, it was a real moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got 40 years already, but you know you fit to see some light and you get caught up behind a cell phone knowing they booking boys for this here. Yeah. You know, the warden like, man, I'm fit to get you another 40 on top of that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm oh, like, yeah. wow. When he told me that, man, I just got dizzy and just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. I this thought about it. I'm like, man, it, it's real. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no he trying to sell it or none of it. I knew he was real. I knew he meant what he said. Shit. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to fuck over me. Shit. Nah, that's a, when you said that, when you told me, when you said that, so I was like, uh, that's a real place because at 14, okay, 54. I'm, you know, I'm going to be out or, you know, parole, you know, whatever. 40 on top of that, nigga. Yeah, it's yeah. over. 
Yeah, it's, it's shit. Yeah, it's out. Now I wanted to, you, you mentioned, of course. Uh, you know, we got to touch on the man because again, uh, you know, he's causing all kind of. And we talked about snitching and all this other stuff, but Charleston White. Um, when you first met the guy, the guy that you met back then, was he as calculated as he is now? Would you say? Man, Charleston always being that guy, man. He he's a smart individual, a very very smart individual. You know, he was ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? That's why we clicked. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, um, I believe in, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump around on time yeah. here. But uh, when y'all, when you got out finally, 10 years ago, or t- about 10 years ago. Nine. Uh, nine years ago. Uh, when you got out, you, uh, you linked up with him to do. Uh, Hype. Yeah, to Hype, do Hype and I found me. I found me as my organization. Okay, yeah. yeah. I found me and then Hype. Um. Even then, you know, of course, the guy we see now, there's a part of that still that, you know, with the hype movement, the I Found Me movement, but of course, he's such a large life character. Did you see, did you feel it was frustration trying to do it the right way to give folks attention as far as to change these laws for young boys out here? Because, and again, the, the mission was always to, to fix the streets, get you know, get shit right from basic from what y'all learned. Man, honestly speaking, man, and, and knowing, you know, he could have stuck to the script and still got the attention he getting today. That's just how I feel, yeah. you know, because it's people who are actually doing it the right way and still got this type of attention. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It just I feel like Charleston, he the type of individual he'll conquer. You know what I'm saying? And when he seen that internet was going crazy on that level, and with his mind frame, his wisdom, hey man, he look, he winning. Mm. He knew he can come in and boom, 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 boom. Look how, man, look, I know him, so that's why I just sit back and I be like, man, this shit here is crazy. You feel me? Like going back to that TYC shit I was talking about, the blueprint. You see what I'm saying? He got that blueprint, man, that them people gave us. He break these people down. You see what I'm saying? You know, he tried to break me down, but you, you come on, he should have known better. That's why he ain't never tried it again. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I ain't no breaking me down, man. Like, come on now. But, you know, it's working for him, so I can't do nothing but salute him and just shame on those who falling for it. You know what I'm saying? Is there any stories you could tell us that can uh, contribute to why Charleston White is the way he is in there? Like, you know what I'm saying? That you can, any stories you could think? Like what? Like, um. When we was locked yeah, up? Yeah, when y'all was locked up. Oh, man. I mean, Charleston, man, uh. I used to be on Buddy Buddy. We, they had us on the Buddy Buddy system, man. You know what I'm Explain saying? Explain the Buddy Buddy system. The buddy buddy system is like this. They you on the same dorm, right? It's a dorm with about 30, 40 some people on the dorm. But buddy buddy system is everywhere you see him on the dorm, you're gonna see me. Everywhere you see me, you're gonna see him. Like we gotta be together. Uh. And if one person do something, both of us get in trouble. We both being held accountable for it. Yeah. And that was because at that time, you know, they knew Charleston was calling shots for six so I was calling shots for thirties. You know what I'm saying? Charleston, he 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 was sixties, huh? Rolling sixty. Uh from by by way of Fort Worth or by way of Cali. Uh as far as you know, they they they'll grab it and bring it down to Texas. Austin. Austin. Okay. OG Zim. They call him ninety nine. Now he got ninety nine years, but he from Austin. Mm. You know the Cali way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, so that's how that went in. If somebody from one of our sets do something, we, you know, they know it come from one of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they put us on the same dorm. Yeah, we're going to put them on the same dorm. We're going to, yeah, so that's how it was. 60s and 30s. Um, uh, you said Dewberry was 60s as well, huh? He's 60s too. Oh, and he was moving around back then as, you know, yeah. as well. What was your relationship with Dewberry uh, in regards? I mean, me and Do, me and Do always had a solid relationship. You know, Do was one of the ones, man. He was a monster. Good with his hands, solid, stand-up <laughs> dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
stand up dude, man. Oh yeah. Oh, um, I also want to. Uh, I also want you to touch on um, some names, man. Uh, Triple C. Triple C. That's my guy. Man. Now in T Y, it's crazy because in T Y C we gave Triple C Ty Wayne Ernest Jerome. We gave him the blues in the state school. You know what I'm saying? He was a rolling 40, Avalon rolling 40. Okay, yeah. You know, so from Amarillo, Texas, West Texas, big country nigga, you hear me? Amarillo nigga. So, uh, Triple C, you know, he was on the dorm with Charleston and Amp now, you know. Yeah. They used to bang his game up, you know what I'm saying? It was him against, we was about, it was like with all us 60s, 30s, Original Swamp Crip, East Terrace Gangster. We was about 30 deep. Oh, yeah. We about 30 deep. Oh, yeah. And we had some Mexicans rocking with us, Mafiosos, 13s. You know, they were blue flagging. You know what I'm saying? My, my boy, Boxer Joe, R.I.P. from Corpus. Okay. He was, he was a silent one, man. He going to rock out. But, uh... Triple C, man, me and him end up going to prison together and everything. That's when we just, we got real tight in the penitentiary. Ah, locked all the way in. Yeah. Uh, where's he at now? Where's he at? I'm just curious. Is man, they say Triple C got a life sentence. He was in Amarillo. He, he got real big out there. You know you can't play with them people like that. Uh, nah, nah, nah. But they say he got a life sentence now. Yeah. I, I was talking to him when he was free. But he disappeared on me, and I'm like, damn, what trip? Then somebody hit me, and they were like, man, trip got a life sentence. I'm like, damn. And, and there's another partner named, uh, his name, uh, Kryptonite. Robert Hockley from G Time. Robert Hockley. <laughs> Kryptonite. Um, uh, just that name alone, I said, yeah, he must, he must, he must been banging hard, goddammit. Yeah, he was solid. I met him on Clemens Unit. When okay. I hit Clemens Unit, I met him. Okay. And uh, he ended up getting shipped from in a ride we was all in, a crib on crib ride on the wreck yard. He was one of them got shipped. And uh, that guy there, man, that's one of my inspirations, man. <laughs> okay. Because okay. that boy, you know, to say we was doing all that in prison, man, that man a super success right now. He, he a person you can look at and say, man, anything is possible. And that's all on Clemens, man. And uh, I'm just curious, uh, Ferguson unit, man, uh, OG Percy. OG uh, Percy, show no mercy, huh? Uh, OG 50 Percy, 50, that's my little brother. Show no man. mercy, yeah. Roger. Bro, yeah, we had Roger Russo. Roger, right there, you Roger know what I'm Russo. Russo little man. twin. Yeah, 50 50. So you man. served time with both these guys. Right. Um, What was your interactions with uh with OG, with, with Percy, man? If you. Uh, I if mean, man, Percy, we, we interacted, man, and still to this day. Matter of fact, I talked to Percy earlier. But, uh, man, Percy, we. Had a run in before we got cool. Yeah, I thought you know what any like uh, shit. Uh, if if you if you if you blue flagging, it's just always. Nah, that ain't that, that ain't, ain't how it go in that, that ain't never the case. Gosh. I mean, it's supposed to be, but you know it ain't always like that. But person, that wasn't a problem with. We wasn't set tripping or nothing like that because I really was chilling. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. wasn't even thugging like that down Ferguson unit. I was laid back on a whole nother level, you know, but it's somebody that's going to always bring you back in. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, by me being on game file, it was like I had no win. Like, y'all going to make me suffer and I ain't even fucking around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't fucking with no crib shit, none of that. I told them as soon as I hit the unit, man, I'm chilling. You know what I'm saying? It's time for me to go home. I ain't on that time, so... It was respected by the, you know, big homie, big homies. Niggas that been there forever, and niggas got their respect and that seniority down there. You know what I'm saying? They like, oh, we been hearing about you. You good. You know what I'm saying? But you had cats that was heat draws, crash dummies. You know, they crips. So by them being crips, man, when they make it to that gang intelligence, they don't look at who chilling and this and that. They gonna go get the one who's chilling before they get the one who's crashing. Oh yeah. Because that's their way of trying to put the clamps on them. Like you know, well we know you this type of individual because it's in your file. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So you need to put a, you need to put some clamps on them or you gonna suffer for it. So it was that type of game. So I had to go on, lace my chucks up ah. and get involved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and Percy came on the unit, man. Percy had a, a crashing crew. You know, enforcers. Like yeah. Percy was on some crip shit for real. Like, man, you violate, you for the put you in the blend all that. He he had his little wrecking crew. Yeah. And they was making noise, and all you was hearing, OG Purse, OG Purse, OG Purse. Then one day, he ended up having a run-in with one of my little partners from N.O. He don't gang bang or nothing. He a cool little cat, solid. Yeah. And, you know, they had words, got into it. My little partner come tell me, man, your partner's man, woo-woo tripping. I say, well, man, you already know I'm going to rock out with you, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I went against the grain. I do that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I went against, I, I go to child hall, person working in the child hall. I'm, man, you going to wreck tonight? He, yeah, I'm going to go out there. I said, I'll see you at the wreck yard then. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Went out there, you know, we, well, I went out there with it on my mind, to yeah, be yeah, honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and uh, he knew it, but he didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. really didn't know me like that, but everybody else did. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it was like, like he said, he just spoke on his interviews, man. It was like a pay-per-view, man, that night. <laughs> yeah. Boys that didn't even go to Rick or you never seen on the Rick yard, they came out there. Oh, nigga, Chuck's late. And, you know, I peeped it, and I'm that type of dude, man, I ain't going to put on the show for nobody. You know, we could have went in the cell and got it in, you know, for all I care, as yeah. long as we got it and established some overstanding. But I told Purse, I'm like, man, I ain't going to give them what they want. There you go. I'm you glad y'all situated yeah. now, God damn it, for real. But after that, he was like, man, I really fuck with you, man. I see that, you know, I see what you really on, you know. And I got gave him a lot of game, you know, letting him know, because, you know, he, he, old, he way older, but yeah. he got me by what? Person, what, 52, 53? I'm 43. Oh, yeah, he got you so, by So, yeah, he. But he just didn't know that penitentiary game. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I had to lace his chucks, you know. Man, how, it ain't. How about Lil Twin, man? Uh, uh, 50, 50, uh, Broderick. Uh, yeah, that's my little bro, man. Yeah, my little man. Muslim brother, man. Yeah, yeah, he turned the Muslim, uh, yeah. you know, even a uh, person. Good dude. Yeah, he Good said he was dude. Still, still doing music. Yeah. Up in that motherfucker for real. Good dude, man. He up for parole right now. He up for parole. Nah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> it's always Because they let him out. Nah, yeah. definitely. Now you've been uh uh rap a lot of Philly? Yeah, I, I I huh? Rap rap a lot of Philly? Who? Uh you. Man, I didn't you know I didn't mess with him here yeah. and there. Yeah. You know I didn't Yeah, I didn't been around him and got guys that's, you know, but Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I I'm in my own lane, do yeah. my own thing. And I, I, you know? I, I only say it because it's crazy that um, a lot of cats now don't know, uh, they're just not learning about the Prince family, about Jay Prince. It's funny, I talk to a lot of people and they look at what happened with Takeoff and right. they look at stuff and they're like, they don't know the history of the, the, the mob ties regime, the rap a lot regime. And um, it goes back, man. It goes decades, man. Decades. Right, right. Um, when you were, you know, moving through that, that was. Um, Right when you got out, was that why you was, uh, when you was younger? Was that right when you was? Uh, when when you I came down? home. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I cut into them when I came home. Okay, okay. Um, I have to ask you about it because, of course, you know, uh, the, 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 the energy around, I know what, what, it, what it was and what it could be, but um, uh, if you're able to speak on it, um, we had a, you know, we had a guy that came and sat down here uh, by the name of Spain, Big Spain. What do you go by now? Uh, he had sat down for a situation that had happened on some cash money shit way back in right, the day. And it, right, right, right. It all got kind of weird and, uh, you know, in, in, in ingested in that. Um, you had a, you were not saying any part of that, but the knowledge of what all, whatever happened with that situation was was be known to you, you know what I'm saying, as far as you had to come across it later. Um, did you ever get that situation resolved as far as just what you knew of uh, Spain sit down and the, the situation that happened? 
with the artist that was that he was dealing with at the time. I mean, you know, when I seen it on, I'm, you know, when I seen it on YouTube, you know, I recorded it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, as soon as I recorded it, I went to my messages and sent it to him. And I asked him, I said, man, what's this here? You know, what's this and who is this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he responded and he was like, man, you know, that's a dude who tried to dirty his name mm. back in the game, you know, but the truth gonna come out, you know, so I'm like, okay, you know, and I left it at that because I know how the game go, mm. you know, so, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I seen it and heard the guy heard what he said clearly. And I had heard it prior before he even got, you know, but I'm one of them guys, man, I give you the benefit of the doubt, you know, but when I, like I say, when I, when I see it, cause I'm under that law, man, like a lot of people, they can say a whole lot of things, you know what I'm saying? But if you can't show me, then I, I can't, I mean, I can't be judged for my affiliation. You see what I'm saying? Like, I had to go through that when I came home with some yeah. guys from my hood. Like, I'm coming home in the blind. You know, I got a little cousin doing 20 and one doing 50. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For a murder case. Yeah. And this happened right before I came home. And supposedly, you know, at the time, I didn't know. You know, but I got out. I was kicking it with a guy from the hood. And my big homies was like, man, why are you kicking it with a rat? You feel me? So you know me, man. I'm I'm still in that penitential mode. Like, nigga, who is you to tell me who I can hang with? You know what I'm saying? I I'm already fucked up about the situation. Like, niggas acting like they still them niggas when nigga I've been gone 20. I ain't see you. I ain't hear from you, nigga. My mom I ain't hear from you. I ain't 20 years now. You trying to tell me who I can hang with? You know, so I'm like, man, first and foremost, man, show me some paperwork. You show me some paperwork, then, hey, man, it'll be a different ball game. But until then, I'm going to do what I do, you know. And she, I called him upon that, and, man, that man presented that work. I slid back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So on that situation, man, you know, she... It is what it is, man. The truth will come out, man. What's in the dog gonna come to the light? And that's how they say it. That's you how know? they say it. Uh, I gotta ask, uh, being out of Port Arthur, man, uh, Pimp C, uh, Bum B, um, what did these guys mean to you, if anything, as far as did you have any relationship with either one of them? Uh, uh, you know, of course, long live the pimp. Well, pimp. pimp. Well, Pimp, man, I used to see Pimp when I was younger. And, uh, you know, of course, it was a good feeling to have some cats out your town rapping and, you know oh, yeah. what I'm saying, had a name for themselves. And uh, I never got to be in no relationship with Pimp, like, you know, because I ended up taking my file, then he ended up taking the file. You know, I wrote him a few times when he was on the Ramsey unit. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you to this day if he ever got the letter or read my letter because I didn't make it home in time to see if, you know, exactly. he was gone. So, uh, but as far as Bun, yeah, me and Bun, that's OG, man. Like, okay. he fucks with me the long way, I fuck with him the long way, you know. I get a bunch of game from him. There you go, there you go. Now, I gotta get your thoughts, cause you got out of, uh, you got out, and you got to the music. Uh, CEO, uh, what was the plan as far as once you stepped out, you see the you know the landscape of you know what's going on in Texas, PA, Houston? Uh, what was your attack as far as how even to approach the music as you got out? Man, I ain't gonna lie, like I devised everything in prison. You know what I'm saying? Like before I came home, I already had it laid out because I was in position in the inside to take care of my business. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I always had a jag. You know what I'm saying? I oh, had people on, in the world taking care of my business, you know, paperwork, all this. So, yeah. man, what inspired me was Master P, Baby, 
you know, cats like that, I used to be like, man, if they can do it, I know I can get out and do it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I came home, man, it was like, this one I'm on. And I got out and was fucking with it real tough. I'm rubbing my shoulders with everybody, like celebrity-wise. Mm. Then, you know, my family, old Stack Five, he had his label. You know, they was doing their thing, you know. And uh, 2017, he ended up making me CEO of his label. That's when he put this on my neck. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? This oh, stack yeah. five right here. Oh, yeah. And uh, SSE, Secret Society Entertainment. But outside of that, I'm LIE Entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Lord, is everything. So I was just wondering, what are your plans with your rap career? Like, how far do you want this to go? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I ain't even on that no more. Like, you know what, what I'm saying? I, I, I got out nine years ago. And, like, I done had my shots. And what I mean by that, like, man, I was rocking with Young Money once upon a time, Lil Wayne now, and I felt like there was my opportunity right then and there. But at the time, I had a baby on the way and had a baby, my first baby, you know. So it was be a family man, be there for my kids or keep on with this music and try to, you know, but. How was rocking with Lil Wayne at the time? Like just moving, cause this is after, uh, of course, way after Katrina and. Man, and I, I ended Houston. up uh, messing with Wayne them, man, on a rap a lot, banding them from Houston, banding Young Money from Houston. Yeah, I remember that situation. Behind was, the jazz and Wayne falling out. That's yeah. how I ended up rocking with Wayne them. Wayne called me. Well, somebody, one of my partners called me like, man, Wayne looking for somebody to hold him down when he come to Texas on the Drake versus Wayne tour. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I get the call and I'm like, oh, yeah. So I say, what you calling me for? You know, I'm on house arrest, fresh out the penitentiary. And he say, shit, I know what you trying to do with your music, this big opportunity for you, you know, woo, woo. So I'm like, bet, I say, shit, tell Wayne, call my phone if it's that real. Mm. That nigga hung up, and not even two minutes went by. A 305 them crossed the screen. I answered the phone, it was tuned. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we went to chopping it up, and you know, he was running it down to me, but I told him, I said, man, I'm on the internet, I see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go into detail. I know what's going on. What you need from me? You know, and he was like, man, I need somebody to hold me down. Don't nobody want to hold me down. Everybody's scared to rap a lot. I say, she <laughs> scared. I, I ain't scared of now, man. Walk God's green earth, man. I feel God. You know, so he like, that's what's up. I say, so tell me what you need from me, man, and I can tell you what I got to offer. I say both of us walking on blind faith. I don't know you, you don't know me. You know what I'm saying? So he like, you right, you right. He say, well, I'm going to be in Austin. You know, they already sending threats. I can't do no after parties or nothing like that because they saying they going to burn down the building, shed it down, woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, all right, that's what's up. So what you need? He say, man, I need 15 bodies. I called. Made a phone call. He had 15 bodies. You know what I'm saying? From Austin, he came to Dallas. SOS. 15 bodies. You know what I'm saying? Came to Houston where it ended it. You know? I was there. You feel me? Like, mm. so that's how that went. You know what I'm saying? So we rock. You know, but. That's a whole nother story. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother that movie, goddammit. <laughs> you feel say me? Say that for part two. Yeah, that's it, a whole nother story, man. But yeah, I put it all on the line, man, nah, for them guys. Nah, for real. You know, I had to explain to them. I'm like, Tune, you got to understand one thing. I told him this. I say, man, uh, you got to understand something. I'm, I'm in, I live in Houston. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't got to never come back here after this. I'm here with them guys. I got to move around. You see what I'm saying? So, man, don't let this be the end of our relationship, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Tune was like, man, you know what? I understand you putting it on the line, man. We locked in for life. This was this man's words. 
We locked in for life, bro. So again, I'm gonna say that story for part two, man. <laughs> that story might be still being told right now. Yeah. yeah. So he just he just needed some muscle, and you were just the guy to go to. Just the streets just needed. I mean, it just it, that's how it felt. That's how the ball bounced. So I'm, I'm curious on your thoughts on uh, the status of the music now, the drill music. Uh, when you see like, you know, rappers die damn near bi-monthly now, it seems. It just seems every like other day. Every other day you hear you hear yeah. about a young man getting gunned down, and um, the music kind of they do kind of cater to it. You know what I'm saying? As far as what's getting put out there, what are your thoughts when you see that? As far as coming from what you seen back in, you know, as a young as a young nigga, to see like kind of where it's at now. What's just what's your thought? What's King Shoes outlook on the music industry man, right now. Be in the, honest in the with you, I don't, I don't even listen to that, man. Yeah, yeah, I hear and, and, and one thing I do know, and I can say because I see it, like that music does have an impact on majority of the youth, man. Oh, yeah, man. And I say that because I done sat back and studied them. We can be chilling, you know what I'm saying? I might pull up jamming some UGK or some Jeezy, you know, and she, them niggas ain't, they spirit ain't there, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pull up with some ESG, ESTG, whatever his name is, yeah. uh, or some shit like that, boy, they whole demeanor just, yeah, them boys it. go, yeah, they fired up and, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah, and where I'm from, they really on, I know that music taking them youngsters fast. Oh, yeah, they nah. really own that shit. They living like the rap songs in PA, man. Oh, nah, for real. Yeah. yeah. And it's a badge of honor to, you know, the, the, the sticks is real. Man, that's that's small town off the chain, man. Just today, like four youngsters got bammed today with some Damn. big guns, AKs and all. Yeah. Damn. All the day. Like, Port Arthur, you know, it's a small town, man, but them boys real active, man. Are there still OGs around uh, Port Arthur as far as to give out game to the under? They not respected. Damn. And I'm one of them to say, you know, they know who I am. They know where I've been. They know where I come from. And they respect me as an individual. But when it comes to giving them game and all that, man, they not trying to hear none of that. They going to hear it, but it's a waste of time. And I'm saying that because I'm my dad and I done tried, tried. Tried, you know, but it ain't, you know, I'll reach a few. It's a few of them that, you know, they digested and be like, man, appreciate you, OG, you know. I needed that. You know what I'm saying? And boy, I see what you doing, and man, you really, you're an inspiration. You know, I get this in my town. You know what I'm saying? And you know, but it's just the majority, man, they ain't, they too far gone. Yeah, they too far gone. So was it ever like a point when you got out that you was like, man, maybe I should move back to Port Arthur. Like maybe I should just find somewhere else to live. Actually, man, I uh, I said I wasn't going to go back to Port Arthur. You know, I stayed in Houston for nine years, but then I ended up catching a pistol case. You know, the case that Charleston White got on social media telling people he got me locked up behind. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh yeah, I ended up catching the pistol case, man. Did you ever speak to him about that? Like I know he went on there and I know he could he tried to do all that. Did you ever address him since for that issue? Yeah, I as soon as I came home, I you know, I got a YouTube channel, Real from the Trill. Yeah, we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got on there and dropped a few videos, but he don't never come back though, you know. And I don't look for him to come back because like I say, I know him, he know me, so it's nothing he can come back and say, cause I'm putting the real out there. Oh. I ain't, I ain't nothing made up. I ain't, yeah, I'm gonna it's put levels. the real out there so he know, like, you know, come on, man. You, that was just his perfect opportunity to say that. Oh, I got another nigga locked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> woo woo whooping. Nah, man, you ain't get me locked up, man. I, some fluke shit went on. I was on a run. I had a blue one, cause they violated me for being around the gun. And I ended up flipping my King Ranch over one night. And I oh, couldn't, yeah, on the highway, couldn't run. And I got caught. You know so what I'm saying? The King Ranch, that's nigga. Yeah, shit. so, you know, it's like, she. I went to jail. And now I'm here, you know, 46 days in the county. Ah. You know, reinstated. 
You know what I'm talking about? There you go. So as for, for the young niggas out here that's that's doing all kind of shit, they ain't never seen the inside of a penitentiary, they ain't never seen inside of a cell. Um, give them a story as far as uh, maybe on uh, you you, sit, you you know niggas that's doing life, right? And you have some young niggas that come in that ain't never seen the inside of of a prison cell. Um, what is probably a story you could tell of some shit that you've seen that didn't go well for some young niggas that was just new and green to the game? Man, I, it's so many stories, man. Uh, but I'm gonna say this one, man. Oh. Uh, I had a little Asian partner from Southwest Houston. Little cool Asian, fly, you know, he cool, man. And, uh, you know, I worked a child high. I'm on the floor this day. Meaning, you know, I sweep, you know, I sweep and, you know, which is concrete. The childhood, the child high flow is concrete. So, yeah. you know, I got a street broom where I sweep up the food if they waste food or, if they spill water, I got to mop, I mop it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can socialize with everybody on the unit that come through to eat. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do when you work the flow. You're going to see everybody. You can talk to whoever you want to talk to because you right there, you know. So uh, my little Asian partner come through one day, man, and we chopping it up. I'm on the gate talking to him. He with, his, he with like three more Asians, one of them from PA. And... uh. Just so happened, uh, they was in tour with Mo Heakley. That's Mexico. Because the Asian from PA took a gold chain from a Mexican from Mo Heakley. So the Mo Heakley essays come in. The Asian's right here. I'm chopping it up with a little Southwest. And I, the, I see the Mexicans come in, but I ain't thinking nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit. And he ain't thinking nothing neither, little Southwest. He's shooting the shit, chopping, what's up, blue hands, woo, woo, woo. And so, man, turn your head, and there it was, boom, the Mexicans came, met them boys. So it went down, so I'm sitting there watching it. I'm like, damn, the sergeant standing there, he watching it. Y'all stop that fight, and this is what he telling, y'all stop that fight. But the whole time, they stabbing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, and I missed that part. It looked like a fight, but they stabbed. And so when they finally stopped, my little partner was laid out on the ground. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn. They were hitting that boy the whole time. And man, the other Asians, they, they survived, but shit, when they put him on, he died right there, bro. When, he, when they put him on the stretch, he turned purple and his arms just, you know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, man. One day you're here, next day you're gone for real. Like, this man sitting here chopping it up with me, laughing, feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he wasn't even the one who took it. No. It just said, That's uh, what I'm an saying. agent from PA. That's what I'm saying. Was it a certain wound that you saw that knew it probably took his life? It was just... in his body. Oh, man. All in the body. Man. Do you feel uh, prison, the prison system, Rehabilitates. It can. I feel like any system can rehabilitate. It's all on the individual. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And prison, man, prison offers a lot. I went to college in prison. I graduated in prison. You know what I'm saying? They, I learned how to fix radiators in prison, even though they don't make them that way no more. Damn. But you know, I took you trades. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? If you want to learn how to cook, they got culinary arts. Like, you get all kind of certs. You know what I'm saying? Were you, uh, were you well read in prison? Did you have books that you attacked? Yeah, I, 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 I was a reader, man, because I, I'm one, I'm a thinker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so reading was a, that was mandatory for me and whoever kicked it with me. Okay, okay. I had boys on words, 10 words a day. Yeah, that, that's my crew. Like, yeah, you're going to learn how to speak. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. we were manipulators. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, real talk. Young, like, yeah, and then if, if, if you come, you them hunters, man, like, you know, they coming in there fresh out of high school and, you know, shit, you know how it go, man. You, hey, man. <laughs> Boy, I got a bunch of game for you, man, oh, especially yeah. if you're going to listen. But, you know, them women, you know, they see you looking good. You preserve, you talking good, 
they not getting this at home. Not the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You telling them everything they ain't hearing, but oh, they really? want to hear. The guards. <laughs> the guards. Yeah. So did, did you ever have a situation with a CEO that, you know? A bunch of them. A bunch of them. <laughs> bunch of them. It, yeah. It, I, how does it go down? Like, it, is it like a spot that niggas got to go find or something? I'm just. Oh, no. Nah, as far as that. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, nah, as far nah, as yeah, that. As far as, as, far that, as that, that. as far as that. Yeah. As far as that, man, I, I got a couple of situations and it's like on that blast. Niggas. You got to be well orchestrated. Yeah, okay, yeah, you yeah. See yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you yeah. can't do that. You can do it alone, but you risking getting caught. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had a team. I always had a team. You know, and uh, man, shit, I got boys going to play S's I. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my partner working the door crew. Going to rig up the doors while they slide open and I, I ain't got to wait on the boss, the piggy boss to open Oh, he got door. a nigga to just open that bitch? No, nah, he done went inside. Oh, and it, the oh, thing nigga. and rigged the door up. Oh, nigga. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm in and out my cells, I please. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? So count time. Count time. No movement. We know this. You know what I'm saying? Boss later have to shake down. It's mandatory. They shake down the cells that's on their list for the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Man, go do your count. I got my boy on the broom, by the door, watching the hallway. And come on, slide up in this cell. Oh, you feel me? <laughs> you know it, what I'm saying? Run it the fuck up. Shit. Hey, man. That, that's, hey, man. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's real. That's real. Yeah. Man, uh, lastly, before we get out, I want to touch on the podcast, man. Uh, um, you said the YouTube channel. Uh, real from the trip. Real from the trip. Tell us about that channel, man. What you doing on there, man? Kind of what you got going? Man, to be honest with you, man, I got a partner, man. He done 20 years, got out, stayed out six months. Now he on death row. Been on death row nine years fighting for his life. Yeah. So he in the county right now because they threw the death row out. But the DA was like, no, we not. You know, when you throw death row out, you supposed to automatically get the life sentence. Yeah. The DA say, no, nah, I want him on death row. So he just sitting in the county right now. And, uh, you know, he called me every other day and, you know, I be inspiring him, keeping him alive, you know. Yeah. So it's like uh, we be chopping it up and he be hearing about podcasts and all that old shit. So we try, he say, man, you know what, we need to make us a channel, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I say, you know what, I'm going to do that for you, man, so I can have you out here in the world and, you know, people can tap in with. So That's what we going to call it? Real from the trio. Because it's what we know. Me and him both from that old law. He one of the ones I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's how that came about. And, and I just, you know, been dealing with it ever since. Oh, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I started it in May. Yeah, in May of this year. But I was already on YouTube. Man, I was on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for year, year, years. But it wasn't on no shit like this. It was just... Yeah. Real you from know, the trail is the I'm showing I'm in the mix, but real from the trail, that's my channel. I, I'm gonna take that somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, I gotta go for it. And how did you get the name Blue Hands for the young niggas at home that may not know? Oh man, Blue Hands come about, you know, from of course being raw from the shoulders <laughs> Talk to and cripping, you know what I'm saying? Talk Blue from cripping and, and having hands, you know what I'm saying? And I just gotta ask, uh. Was there any fights that you lost, like lost, lost? Nah. <laughs> the, the record looked good. The record looked good. Nah. Was there any challenge that you said, I ain't going to fuck with that nigga? I ain't about to. Yeah, I ain't about to nah, fuck. see, that, that's what separated me from the rest, man. I, I'm the guy that liked the bullets. <laughs> he said, give me the bullet. Yeah, I like the, the bullets, man, and I don't want nobody my size. Oh, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they should call you Blue Heart, nigga. Yeah, I don't want nobody on my side. That was separating me from the rest, man. I ain't, I ain't pick my fights. Nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's real. <laughs> real for Yeah, I ain't trip. pick my fights. Nah. There you go, man. Uh, for those that do want to get at you, man, uh, you know, again, this is one of many. Uh, but for those that do want to follow the movement, follow the channel, tell them how to get at you on all social medias, uh, where to go, how to, you know, spell out the man, YouTube I'm channel. Man, I'm on Facebook, King Shoe. K I N G S H O O. I'm on Instagram, CEO 
underscore King Shoe underscore one one zero. And of course, YouTube channel Real from the Trio. Yeah. You got any shout outs you want to give? Oh, man, of course, man. I want to. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Again, I want to shout out to you boys, man. Real life street stars, man. I appreciate y'all again, man, for the open arms, man. And, Much love. You know. Hey, I dig this blue couch, man. You oh, yeah. hear me? <laughs> everything <laughs> blue. Hey, now, I gonna... couldn't wait to come sit on this motherfucker. Hey, we're going to bring it down saying? to you one time. We're going to yeah, bring it down for to you. So, man. man. And, uh, you know, shout out DJ Beto, man. You shout know. Beto for real. Yeah. Shout out DJ yeah, Beto, solid. man. Uh, shout out to PA, man. Land of the Trill, where it's all real, man. H time, D time. All the real ones, man. It's two minutes and nine. Shout out to all my real ones, man. Y'all yeah, know who y'all is, man. Long live the pimp. Long go. live Snap Marley. You know what I'm talking about? Long live Cash. Free my little bro Ray. Mexican Ray. You know what I'm talking about? Fort Worth, Texas. Mm. 25. Been gone 25 years, man. Talk to him today, man. Now hold it down. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the 110 figures, man. Stack five, hold your head up, fam. Oh, I know you're going through it, man. But we gonna do it for Snap, man. Will you know they, what I'm talking about? Will they? Will they be able to watch this? Uh, some guys that's locked down, sitting down. Are they able? Yeah, to they watch got their way. Okay, okay, they got yeah, their way. Shout ways. out to the guys, man. Yeah, God damn it, free man. the guys, man. Real, hey, real. Hey, we do this for y'all. Fifty, for fifty real. twin, boy. We waiting on you, man. Nah, for real. I know they gonna put you on this blue couch, man. You know oh, what I'm talking come about. On. Come yeah, on now. man. Come on, for shit show. Hey, we already know what it is, man. We got to say, man, don't get too lit to forget, man. This is just one of many, man. We're going to tap in a lot of time with, with my bro, King Shoe, man, because, again, from the moment that I got introduced to you, man, you've been nothing but real, been nothing but just uh, just, just energy, bro. And we got to we gotta keep doing this, man, because there's so many stories in what you've said. And you didn't did the time, man. You didn't did the time. And, you know, of course, we want to go all the way back through there. But for those that are deaf, dumb, stupid, man, we do got them on the couch, man. Blue Hands, A.K. King Shoe. In the building, we gotta say it, man. You are a real life street star, man. Yes, hey, sir. Salute that shit. <laughs> huh. Shout out real life street stars, nigga. Moon. Hey.